Hello, I'm Shweta and I'm going to talk about CPAB for circuits and more in the symmetry key setting. This is joint work with Shota Yamada. Let's start by defining the problem. ABE stands for attribute based encryption. This is a notion introduced by Sahai and Waters. And it, it's a generalization of public key encryption that was introduced to enable fine grained access control on encrypted data. So let's see an example. Let's say that you have an organization, let's say an educational institution, and you have various users in this institution, as well as uh, different files. What you'd like to do is associate with each user uh, a secret key that corresponds to different attributes of the user. So these attributes could be things like the role that they are in, the department that they belong to, their affiliation, date of joining, and such other things. And the files in turn could correspond to access control policies. So for instance, uh, let's say you have this file uh, with an access control policy that says that only a professor in the computer science department at IIT Madras with date of joining satisfying some constraint should be able to uh, decrypt this file. And every file will have uh, similar uh, uh, similar restrictions or similar access control policies. And as you would expect, you would like that a file should be decryptable if and only if a user's uh, secret key has attributes that satisfy the policy embedded in the file. And for security, what you'd like is that even if a set of users pull together their keys or they, they collude together, they still cannot decrypt any file that uh, they were not individually authorized to decrypt. This property is known as collusion resistance and it's a very important security property for ABE schemes. Now ABEs come into uh, avatars. There's the ciphertext policy variant, which is the kind uh, that we've seen so far. Here the ciphertext is the one that contains the access control policy. There's also the key policy variant. So here you switch things around. So now the uh, file contains the attributes and the uh, secret keys of users contain the policies. There are in, uh, additional desirable properties that you might ask from these constructions. So, so far in what I showed you, neither the attribute nor the function in the construction are hidden but you might ask for them to be hidden. So these are called the so-called attribute hiding and function hiding. Here what we know or here what we want is that, uh, as I said, the attribute should be hidden, whether in the ciphertext or in the secret key, depending on whether you're in KP or CPABE, and analogously for uh, functions, so for function hiding. And the prior work in this area can be summarized as follows. So in the key policy setting for restricted circuit classes uh, ranging from point functions to NC1 circuits, there's been a long range of uh, elegant constructions. A big breakthrough in this area was uh, by Godwino, Vekuntanathan and V who provided the first construction of uh, key policy ABE for all polynomial sized circuits. And there were improvements uh, or uh, adaptations of, of this work in, in follow-up work. In the ciphertext policy setting, for restricted circuit classes, the story is similar to the key policy setting where we have uh, some nice constructions from pairings or from learning with errors, sometimes both. For all polynomial size circuits, the story is uh, significantly worse. So we only have one candidate construction by Bretersky and Vekuntanathan. And this is a, a heuristic. So this is a candidate construction. It does not have a security proof. And the additional properties that I talked about, uh, let's just discuss what was known about them. So uh, we know that for strong attribute hiding, a, a natural strong notion of attribute hiding, uh, ABE actually becomes equivalent to functional encryption, which in turn implies indistinguishability obfuscation. For weak attribute hiding, we know that uh, or we call weakly attribute hiding uh, ABEs as predicate encryption. And here also we have a construction for all circuits from learning with errors. For function hiding, we know that function hiding functional encryption, so the, not, not ABE, but the generalization, functional encryption, we know that this implies IO. 
but function hiding a b e we don't know anything yet so presumably constructions are still possible so now let me tell you about our results so the main uh, result that we have here is to sort of provide uh, another another entry in this table so in the cp setting for poly size circuits we provide the first construction uh, this is from the learning with errors assumption but uh, it's a full solution is only in the symmetric key setting. So we do provide something in the public key setting, which I'll talk about. But uh, an optimal solution, we provide only in the symmetric key setting. So let me tell you about our results in a little more detail. We provide the first symmetric key CPABE for polynomial size circuits. These circuits can be of unbounded size. There's, I mean, they have to be polynomial, but uh, this polynomial need not be fixed a priori. The encryptor can choose a circuit of any size that it likes. Uh, our construction supports unbounded collusions. So it's fully collusion resistant and it's based on the learning with errors assumption. We also adapt this to the public key setting, but this, is, this solution only works for bounded size circuits. So this is why I said that it's not a full solution. There are some aspects of it which are optimal. So for instance, the size of the ciphertext secret key, the runtime of encrypt keygen and decrypt, these are optimal. But the runtime of the setup algorithm and the size of the public key, these are huge. They depend on the size of the circuits that can be supported by the scheme. And therefore, we're stuck with bounded size circuits. In terms of the additional properties that I talked about, we show that function hiding attribute based encryption also implies functional encryption and hence IO. Uh, and we uh, weaken the notion of function hiding uh, for ABE and then provide a definition and then provide a construction from the learning with errors assumption. So let me talk a little more about our techniques. A CPABE consists of the following algorithms. There's a setup key gen encrypt and decrypt. In the symmetric key setting, the setup only outputs a master secret key. Uh, there are, there's no separate public key. And this master secret key is input both to the encrypt and the key gen algorithms. The key generator takes as input some attributes X and provides the corresponding secret key. The encryptor takes a message M and some policy or function F and provides the corresponding ciphertext. And decrypt works to reveal M if and only if, if and only if F of X is equal to one. So now we'd like to construct a CPAB for circuits and we have a KPAB for circuits. So here's a folklore approach that goes via universal circuits. Recall that a universal circuit uh, U takes as input a function description as well as an input to that function and emulates the computation of that function on that input. So u of f comma x where f is a function and x is an input to the function is simply f of x. So I'm going to represent uh, uh, input inputs by uh, these boxes, uh, rectangular boxes, and I'm going to represent functions by triangles. And now a very natural folklore transformation given a KPABE is just that, you know, use the universal circuit to convert the input into, into a function. So, you know, just take the universal circuit and hard code X inside it. This is now a circuit. And uh, the function F, it can be uh, now converted to a string. So the function representation can just now be a, a string which is meant to be an input to the circuit u sub x. Given this, it's completely trivial how to use KPABE. The uh, CPABE encryption will just run the KPABE encryption, but now the circuit f is represented as, as a string, right? So you can just run KPABE uh, encryption. And the CPABE key generation as you would expect, just runs KPABE key generation for this function u sub x. Decryption is, is just decryption and everything works uh, just as you want. But this is not a satisfying solution. 
So in particular, the size of the public key, the ciphertext, and the running time of setup key generation, encryption, and decryption, they are now all going to grow with the maximum function size f max. Okay, so in particular, you cannot support unbounded size circuits. Uh, so how do we get around this? Well, the first trick that we use is uh, that of redistributing computation. A similar trick was used in uh, AMY 19. And here is the idea. Now, we'd like to support unbounded sized circuits. But in, uh, and in this setting, only the encrypt algorithm knows what is the size of the circuit because it gets it as input. So encrypt can depend on the size of the circuit and so can decrypt, but setup and key generation cannot. Okay, so the problem with what we saw before is that uh, if, if I want to run the KPABE key generation for a function u sub x, this forces key generation to depend on f max. And why is this? Because the circuit u sub x takes as input a string of size uh, at most f max. So clearly the, there's a size dependence there. And this is what is leading to the problem. So the idea that we use here is that we don't ask the CPABE key generation to compute this KPABE key, but rather we'd like to distribute the computation between the CPABE encrypt and key gen so that each respects the efficiency requirement of CPAB. So here's what I mean by this. So currently in what we've seen so far, you have this key generation just simply running the KPAB key generation and computing the key for u sub x. This is uh, you know, bad for us, like I said. Now, what I'd like to do is the following. So the, the key generation has the input x, but it doesn't have the time. Uh, you know, it doesn't have time depending on f max in which to run. On the other hand, the, the encryption algorithm, it has time. So it knows uh, the length of f and it is allowed to run in that much time, but it does not know the input text. So the question is whether these two can somehow do something, you know, they don't talk to each other, but they do have some shared state in the form of the master secret key. So can they somehow collaboratively produce this KPAB secret key? One given the input, but not the time, and one given the time, but not the input. And the answer is that, yes, you can. Uh, you can use uh, uh, functional encryption. I'll, I'll talk about how. And uh, this was a trick that was already used in AMY19, like I said. So here's uh, the definition of a key policy functional encryption scheme. Uh, this is just like uh, key policy attribute based encryption, but uh, here the, we insist that the attribute be hidden. So in particular, the encryptor is now going to compute a ciphertext for uh, some message M. And uh, given the ciphertext and the secret key corresponding to some function F, Decryption should output f of m and nothing else. So in particular, no information about m outside f of m should be revealed by this construction. Also note that uh, what we're looking at now is a public key scheme. So the encryptor only gets the public key, does not get the master secret key. And uh, what we know here is that as long as uh, the adversary only requests for a single key, so uh, if for, you know, a collusion, there's no collusion resistance. So the adversary can only get a single key. Uh, in that case, we know how to construct this uh, key policy FE for all circuits based on LWE. So now let's see how to use this to redistribute computation. So the CPABE key generation now, it takes its input X, it does not convert it to the circuit U sub X, it does because it does not have enough time, it simply encrypts it using functional encryption. And the CPABE encrypt, which does have time, uh, it does some computation, you know, uh, that depends on the size of U sub X, and it uh, produces a function, functional encryption key for some circuit C. I, I'll tell you what it is in a second. And together these two, uh, when they're put 
uh, when they're put together, the FE decryption algorithm outputs C of X. And I would like the C of X to be the KPAB secret key for U sub X that I wanted, right? So that's, that's how I define my circuit C. So here the key observation is that uh, the circuit C is, it's the KPABE key generation circuit for some U sub X. So this circuit C clearly depends on U sub X, which in turn depends on F max. However, the neat thing here is that the output of this circuit, so C of X evaluated uh, you know, on, on some uh, X, this output, the KPABE key, is actually short in the construction by Bonnet et al. So we're really crucially relying on the fact that even though the circuit size is actually large, the output size of the circuit is quite short. It can be bounded by some fixed polynomial. And this is a very nice property that, uh, that is achieved by the construction of BGG+. Plus. So it's not, uh, it's not that you can use any old uh, a, a B scheme or F E scheme here, they really have to be chosen carefully so that the efficiency requirements are met. And now if you have the KPAB secret key, well, the, you know, the earlier idea from the folklore construction of providing the KPAB ciphertext for F comma M, well, it can still do that. And A B decryption can still work to give you exactly the functionality that you want. So here, as I mentioned briefly before, the components have to be chosen carefully so that the efficiency requirements are met. So in particular, the functional encryption scheme must, must be chosen carefully. Uh, you want that the functional encryption ciphertext should not grow with the size of the circuit C. And in order to achieve this, we can use the one key succinct functional encryption by Goldwasser et al., which is based on LWE. This ensures that the FE ciphertext only depends on the depth input and output of the circuit and not the size of the circuit. So the size of the circuit is bad for us, but we don't incur a loss based on the size. So since we only, uh, since our FE ciphertext only depends on the depth input and output, it turns out that, uh, you know, we can satisfy the efficiency requirement of the CPAB key generation algorithm. So we get in particular that the key generation only depends on the size of X and the encryption only depends on the size of F. And the KPAB secret key, as I already showed you, is just generated on the fly. However, the drawback of this approach is that it restricts the scheme to be symmetric key. And this is because you have the CPAB encryption algorithm running the FE key generation algorithm, which is obviously a, a privileged procedure. So it needs the FE MSK. All right. So we made a little bit of progress, but uh, observe that so far we're still only restricted to bounded size circuits. And this is because uh, if our underlying KPABE must encrypt the string F, then the KPABE setup must then be initialized with a bound on F, so some F max. And this then only supports bounded size circuits. So here, there is one natural way out. Well, the CPAB encryption, which gets the circuit F as input, clearly it knows the size of it. And it's a symmetric key algorithm at this point. So may as well let it run the KPAB setup as well. Okay, so now this was our picture from before. And now we are saying that the KPAB setup should also be run by encrypt. So that's fine. But we have, we have to be more careful. So one thing to observe is that uh, this U sub X, as I already said, depends on the size of F. Uh, therefore, the circuit C depends on the size of F. And uh, even though the C is uh, a fixed description in the sense that it's always the KPABE key generation algorithm circuit, uh, it varies depending on the, the size of the input, right? So the input in this case is uh, F and 
every time that uh, the CPAB encryptor gets some function f, if the size of these functions vary, then this uh, uh, fe dot keygen has to actually generate fresh keys each time because the circuit is going to change as the size, the circuit C is going to change as the circuit F has a uh, varying size. So now this becomes a problem because in, in what we just said, it implies that uh, for different CPAB encryptions, I'm going to have different uh, FE secret keys. And this is a problem because the underlying FE is only secure against uh, an adversary who, who does, not have, does not do collusion. So the adversary only gets a single key. But we can solve this by using the following buy now standard trick. Well, you pad the circuit size to a power of two and run lambda instances of uh, single key FE. The CPABE key generator does not know the size of F, but it, it knows all the lambda, uh, you know, FE keys. Uh, so it's just going to run the FE encryption for all of them. So it knows the public keys of these FE schemes. It's just going to run the encryption for all of them. And it turns out that that will just work. For attribute and function hiding, so for weak attribute hiding, there's a very nice compiler from lockable obfuscation, which can be constructed from LWE. And this transforms any ABE to a you know, predicate encryption system that satisfies weak attribute hiding. For function hiding, what we show is that uh, even, even uh, in the symmetric key setting and even only for attribute-based encryption, function hiding, in fact, implies uh, a secret key functional encryption for circuits, which in turn implies uh, indistinguishability obfuscation. So what we do is that we weaken the definition of function hiding and then we provide a construction supporting all circuits. I don't have time to go into the details of these constructions. I refer you to the paper uh, for that. So I'd like to conclude with some open problems. Uh, the main most pressing open problem is to generalize this construction to the public key setting for unbounded circuits. And as I already mentioned, the hurdle here is that we want to compute the um, FE key by, you know, using within the encryption algorithm. And this FE key needs the master secret key, but uh, the encryption should be a public key algorithm. So there is a, a tension there. So this is the main hurdle and uh, resolving it, it, you know, in any way would be really fantastic. So CPAB for circuits from LWE, well, from anything actually, CPAB for circuits is not known. And this is a, you know, fairly significant open problem. CPABE for NC1 is known from pairing based assumptions and getting even that from LWE would uh, aid us considerably in our understanding of these constructions. So that's uh, that's all I had to say. Thank you for your attention.